last thing you want to find yourself buying into is the the narrative that they keep feeding you, that they're telling you that believe that God will do the impossible for you in your life. Well, first off, there's no such thing as impossible. That doesn't exist. Secondly, there's nothing imaginary about your engine of creation that I refer to, that they have made you believe that is your imagination because you don't empower it as something that is actually real, so therefore you disempower it. That's why you're not utilizing it to its fullest potential. You have to convince yourself that no matter where you find your soul, nothing is impossible or impractical or illogical or unattainable. That is the dis-ease, D-I-S, line E-A-S-E, or dash in between, dis-ease, disease, that the mind carries. That is the dominant plague. So remove the very premise and the notion of these things even existing, because they don't. Nothing is impossible for anything. It's just, it is. It's here already. So you have to understand, you have to stop waiting for anything and start creating everything. That's where the real magic happens. You know, it's so simple. It took me so long to realize this in my own life. But I hope I could be reaching out to some young folks there in your teens or 20s and you can get this stuff real early because it took me a long time to catch on. But uh, that's why I am disseminating this wisdom and my own connection. But again, as before, I do not profess to be a teacher of anyone else except myself. I'm not of any authority above or below. I'm only an authority of myself. I don't give opinions or advice. I just offer my connection to people and take take from it what you will, basically. But uh, don't keep using these words because thou, those are impediments. You know, you have to understand, you you are thoroughly immersed in a matrix run by reptilians that are very good at what they do, and they brought their technologies and their sciences here to Earth. That's what you embrace as the internet and television and all of this. That's all reptilian. Because they came here before human beings did, and they, they built their infrastructure, and then they brought the humans here waiting for you to evolve and grow into what you are now. And you're continually evolving. You know, first things are created, and then they they evolve. So these creationists versus evolutionists, it's all nonsense. Something has to be created in order for it to evolve and grow and expand. And that's exactly what it is here. But unfortunately, there is a cold hard fact of the human condition that is such that Underneath all of the social pleasantries, you're actually just ra- you're actually just running on a prehistoric software program. That's basically what's going on. So I refer to it as the primitive. You can call it the id, you know, the subconscious, the primordial, the archaic, the relic, the denizen of the dark, left languishing in a prehistoric time long gone by. But those primitive roots never left you and they never will. That's why I always stress that you can never secede from the darkness as much as you can never run away from yourself. But just understand that. Stop using these words. You know, that's what they want you to do, to think that these things are impossible and that your imagination is imaginary. That's why you manifest negativity so rapidly and anything of a high vibrational nature takes a lot longer because it has to cut through the density of this negative wall that has been propagated by all of these unconscious individuals that are transmitting these frequencies and adding these things to this collective unconscious. It's like a lead shield that you have to cut through with a blowtorch just to allow your manifestation energies to connect with you. And I'm not talking about from some distance. I mean everything being one. But if you're in an infinite ocean of everything, and the surrounding area where you are is poisoned, you have to cut through that to get to an area that's not poisoned. We are each a single drop of soul from an endless sea of source. That source, of course, is God. Not high above, but everywhere. You, me, and everything else, not just human beings. So when you say impossible, you are already shutting down 
any probability of anything magnificent happening in your life because that is the intent of these words and the, the, the weight of the energy that they carry. That's why they tell you, well, that's a pipe dream. That's impossible. You'll never realize it. You don't have what it takes. You're not made of the right stuff. And all of these things that condition you into believe that you're just not on the right journey. So just give up and go home. Go back to your nine to five and, you know, start complaining about the government again. Sit on the couch and feel sorry for yourself. Overeat, watch TV and go to bed miserable. Wake up and repeat the same process over and over again. That's exactly what they want you to do. It's really just that simple. So you have to omit and expunge such energies as these because it isn't the word that is impeding your progress. It's what that means to you that you're being convinced of being the truth is what is actually blocking you. The word is just a deceptive tool that's carrying something in it that is even more malevolent than the exterior facade itself. Just like the Trojan horse. It wasn't the horse that was the danger. The horse was the facade that got it into the gates. What the real danger was, what was it was carrying inside its belly. That's how these things work. Words are empty containers, <clears throat> just like thoughts. They're carrying specific forms of energies in them that are either specifically contrived with a deliberate intention of a high vibrational nature or a low vibrational nature. But when they receive these signals, and I mean they, your intended target, whatever it is that you're transmitting or focusing these things at or on, that's when you'll see that become something. Meaning that if you are cursing at somebody, you'll watch how that will adversely affect them and hurt their feelings and break their heart and ridicule them and lower their vibration. Or if you're complimenting somebody, You'll see them smile and perk up and say, thank you. You know, and you'll help them and make their life a little bit easier, even if just for a few minutes. That's the power of energy. So the same thing that you're doing for others by complimenting them, do for yourself by saying, I'm not going to use these words, but even more so, I'm not going to give them any practicality or applicable ability in my life. And by that, I mean, do not construe them as anything real because these are just imaginary divisive mechanisms designed to sever your connection to your higher self because you believe these things are real that's impossible that's imaginary that's impractical that's unattainable that's implausible that's imperceivable you see how they work you so you are already setting yourself up to exist inside of a prison but remember this if you feel that you're in a prison, you will always have that sense of wanting to be free. When you have been free the entire time, you are not in a prison. Nobody is keeping here, you here against your will. You're only doing it to yourself. And I know that you could feel what I'm saying because I know that you're more than listening. That I know. You have to understand, sunshine is built on tears because in time, all pain leans towards the sun, the light, the higher self. What is the difference between tears of joy and tears of sorrow? The weight of wisdom that they carry because contained within each drop is an infinite ocean of wisdom. Your tears are the voice of your heart and soul. Listen, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. God bless. Because God has already blessed you, my friend, big time. Perhaps in more ways than you'll ever understand, realize, or ever even know.